time and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing two light fun book tags. I have just been so busy with planning my wedding. I haven't had time to think of good videos to film so I'm just going to do some night light ones um, up until the wedding. Also before I forget a quick announcement I've been doing a buddy read with Lady Jane Books and we have been reading the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I have a lot of feelings about it. Uh, we are going to be doing a live discussion here on my channel uh, on the 21st of January at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I will, I will try to schedule it. So hopefully like it schedules. I've never been done a live stream, so we'll see how this goes. So the first one I was tagged in, the second one I wasn't. I have been collecting either tags I want to do or tags that I've been tagged in and I've been really bad at actually doing them. So a lot of these tags are from like November or at latest early December. So I should have done these over a month ago, but I was busy. And especially at the end of year, I feel like you're really summing up your reading year in a lot of videos. So you don't often do as many book tags unless it's like end of year book tags. So for some reason, I thought that these two would go together, even though thinking of it now, it's like pirates and musketeers don't really go together. But I think it's because it's the era because the three musketeers takes place in the 1600s I believe or early 1700s I don't remember and like that was the height of the pirate age too so I put those two together so this is what we've got so moving on so the first one is an original tag created by Hannah from Hannah's blog I'll link her channel down in the description and it's called the pirates and book tag when I was a kid I used to be obsessed with learning about pirates and about their lifestyle and especially I got into books that like debunked common tropes that you think of like pirates living like oh yeah pirates are romanticized in a lot of fiction especially in the early 20th century with the movies you see a lot of like 30s 40s 50s movies about pirates and you do have like Pirates of the Caribbean that has revitalized the genre but it's really interesting to see like just how unreal Hollywood got the life of a pirate so I used to love reading books about that when I was a kid. Let's get into the questions. Number one, Captain Kidd was the first pirate to ever to be publicly hunted down and captured. Once he was captured, betrayed by his friend, there were rumors that he had a ship full of treasures and this kicked this kickstarted the myth that pirates have buried treasure. Incidentally, if he did have a ship full of goods hidden away, it was never found. Interesting. Uh, name a book or collection of books that you prize very highly and would bury as treasure over risking them being stolen. <laughs> I love this one so much. Um, I, I don't know if I actually have a specific book that I would do that with. Um, there's definitely some of my pretty books that I own, like my Lovecraft collection. So there's certain really pretty books that I'm like, like, I can't imagine ever not having them or ever getting rid of them. And like, I prize them a lot. But when it comes to like actually burying them, probably no book. <laughs> Number two, the general public was fascinated with the criminal lives of pirates and eagerly bought and read pamphlets dec describing their crimes, which is a bit weird. But I think they got obsessed with like Jack the Ripper when he was haunting London too. So I think it's just something about human nature. We, we like the shocking. Uh, name a true crime book or a book that contains a fascinating bad character. Um, I haven't been reading a lot of true crime books recently. I used to love them when I was a kid. There's quite a few that are about Jack the Ripper that I got, got obsessed with. But um, I'm going to go with a book that contains a fascinating bad character. I'm actually going to go with my, if not favorite book, then one of my top favorite books. And that is Crime and Punishment by Fedor Dostoevsky. Uh, basically, it's about a murderer who murders these two women and starts to feel guilt after he commits his crime. That's the entire plot of the book. And to me, his character is just so fascinating because it really gets into his head and he's presented as a real human being. He's not just simply this like villain, horrible, like he's a person who's got mental issues that he needs to overcome and he's a narcissist in many ways but he's a fascinatingly bad character <laughs> that makes sense 
Number three, probably it probably comes as no surprise that the British took advantage of every opportunity to gain power in the Caribbean and the Americas. In peacetime, they condemned pirates, declaring them evil and against all of mankind. They made death the pen penalty for piracy. But in wartime, they employed and encouraged people to become pirates and capture enemy ships. They just called them privateers instead of pirates. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Uh, name a book with an authority or government that takes advantage of their power. For some reason, the first books that come to my mind are like dystopian type worlds. So that includes things like 1984, um, Fahrenheit 451, Brave New World. I have own all copies of that, but just dystopian worlds where the government gained so much power that they just kind of thought they were above the law, law in a sense, and it's really creepy. <laughs> Number five, during the time of the golden age of pirates, women were not allowed to join the Navy and it was very rare for a woman to openly join a pirate crew. To claim their positions on ships, some women were forced to disguise themselves as men. Name a character that has to go into disguise to achieve something. Oh, the first one that comes to mind is the Scarlet Pimpernel because he is in disguise several times during the book. But specifically for women, there was this uh, series by Tamara Pierce that I, my, both I and my sister read when we were younger. Um, Alana, um, The Lioness. I don't remember what the first book was called. I'll put it up here. But basically, it's about this woman who disguises herself as a boy to become a knight. And she and her brother change places. They're like 11 in the first book. And he wants to go become a scholar or something like that. And she wants to fight. And so she was going to go to more of a scholarly like woman's school and he was going to become a knight. But they kind of switch places kind of and she disguises herself as a boy and he goes to study. Um, so yeah, it was a really great series. But I feel like if I read it now, I wouldn't enjoy it quite as much. Number six, many of us love the idea of pirates, but the reality is that some pirates were extremely vicious, in some cases forcing the captains of ships to eat their own body parts. That's lovely. However, other pirates may have had better intentions, merely looking for a better life for themselves and once their pi uh, privateering careers had ended. Some pirates were even referred to as the Robin Hoods of the sea. Name a book featuring body horror or name a book with a morally gray character. Ooh, I don't read that much, that many books that have body horror. Um, like maybe a little bit of The Troop by Nick Cutter. That's one that comes to mind that has a little bit of body horror, but a morally gray character. You know, one character I'm thinking of, and I can't remember his name, From the Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. There are these two men who look exactly alike, and they're both in love with the, or maybe they don't look exactly alike, but they look very similar, and they are both in love with this young woman. And uh, one of them realizes, and she's only in love with one of them. And the other one that's also in love with her is kind of one of the smaller antagonists of the book, but in the end he, he really pulls through and makes a courageous decision. Spoilers, I shouldn't give too much away, but I, I loved his character in the book because he is very morally gray, but he also is good in the end. So I don't know, those are the morally gray characters I like. Those that aren't necessarily like good throughout the book, but that in the end for some reason, they make the decision to try to be a better person. So number seven, pirates have become heavily featured in popular culture, featuring in books, movies, music, etc., etc. What is one of your favorite things featuring pirates? Oof, that is that is hard. I feel like there's a lot of great movies. Um, as much as I've enjoyed reading pirate books in the past, um, I think the movies really bring to life the beauty of the sea and especially the ones that were from the 40s and 50s. And while they were ridiculous and semi-sexist because a lot of the women were portrayed rather unrealistically, um, even even so, like I love watching swashbuckling movies. Um, number eight, pirates travel around all the time. What countries would you like to visit most if you were a pirate? Ooh, 
Uh, definitely there were a bunch of pirates that worked out of China. So I would say like probably visiting um, China, a lot of countries in like Southeast Asia, maybe Japan, Korea. I'm really interested in Asian history. I've talked enough about that on my channel. So um, those would be my top countries to visit. And if I was a pirate, I could totally do that. Not that I would be a pirate. So I really enjoyed doing this tag. Now we're going to go on to another original tag. This one was created by Becky from Teacup the Storyteller. And she created this about a month ago about, and she did not tag me, but I really enjoyed it. So I want to do it. And that is the Three Musketeers book tag. This is such a cool tag because I used to love the Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas when I was younger, but I haven't read it for probably about eight or nine years. So it's been a while, but I used to just adore the book. It's got this perfect balance between like vicious, horrible characters, um, but then like great swashbuckling scenes and then political intrigue. It's like the original Game of Thrones, but like 10 times better. <laughs> I'm sorry for all the fans of Game of Thrones. Uh, number one, Alexandre Dumas was born in the 19th century. Do you have a favorite time period to read about? If yes, what do you like about it? Uh, I would say my favorite time period in general is the Victorian era, but Victorian era, like might indicate just England and I'm not talking about just England. So I'm, I'm just going to say the 19th century in general, because I'm really introduced, uh, interested in like the Qing dynasty in China and the Joseon dynasty in Korea. And, um, also a lot of exploration that was going on around the world. Um, uh, in the 19th century, the quest to find gold in the Americas. I would say definitely 19th century, but it's not just like Victorian era in England. It's like all over the world. <laughs> Number two, Alexandre Dumas was born in France. Is there a French author whose book you'd recommend? Uh, Les Mis, and by the way, this is my favorite copy. Uh, it is a thick bad boy, but it is unabridged. And I tried to read an abridged copy and no, I just <laughs> don't like it. But this is a great copy. Another author that I really love is Jules Verne. Anything by Jules Verne, I will read. Um, I used to love him in high school and I still enjoy his writing. Number three, Alexandre Dumas often based his novels on real events and historical figures. Is there a person from the past, artist, politician, simply anyone you would like to meet? Oh, that's, that's a tough, um, question because I could do several different routes because I would love to meet a lot of like the authors that I enjoy and love because my problem is my my favorite genre in a sense uh, are classics so uh, it's hard to meet the authors like it's one thing to go see like a book signing of you know JK Rowling she's the first one that came to mind um because she's still alive but like to do Tolkien for example or uh Victor Hugo or Charles Dickens or Elizabeth Gaskell all my favorite authors like none of them are alive anymore so I guess to go back and meet them would be what I would probably pick. Number four, Alexander Dumas wrote some pretty chunky books. For example, The Count of Mas Monte Cristo, which I have not read yet. I will someday, uh, is almost over a thousand pages as opposed to his son, Alexander Dumas, the junior, whose only book, The Lady of the Camellias, is less than 180 pages. What is the longest and shortest book you've read? I'm not sure about shortest book because I've read a, quite a few of like technically their books, but they're not um, because they're like short stories. Like probably the shortest I've probably read is one of H.P. Lovecraft's stories because a lot of his are quite short. I'm not sure if that's the shortest book. The longest book, I'm pretty sure I, I read an unabridged version uh, of the Arabian Nights. I'm pretty sure that's the longest book I read because it was like 1400 pages, the copy I read. Now I do own this copy, which is an abridged version, uh, but it's one of the most famous translations of the Arabian Nights. So I'm pretty sure that's the longest book I've read. Um, I've also read War and Peace, which is like 1200 pages. So number five, is there a book you want everyone to know about? It can be your favorite book of all time or some recent read you rec you'd recommend to other people. Another one that I have, I should be recommending more and I probably don't enough is anything by Kiego Higashino. I'm currently reading, or I'm about to finish, uh, The Silent Parade. 
uh, which is his newest book that has been translated into English. He's a Japanese author, and I just feel like more people should read him, especially if they like mysteries. Uh, he writes a lot of amazing psychological mysteries. Not exactly one that's like my favorite book, but I, I tend to like recommend different books each time as my favorite book. I'm really bad about that. Number six, one of the most famous quotes in literature is all for one, one for all. Comes from the pen of Alexandre Dumas. Do you keep track of your favorite quotes when reading? Do you have at least one quote, quote you'd love to share? Which book does it come from? Uh, I used to keep a notebook of quotes that I liked from books, but I have not written in that notebook for at least a couple years. It was like this old notebook I had, and let me see what my like latest quote was that I actually uh, quoted. Oh, this one's a cool one. This one's from Gaudy Night by Dorothy L. Sayers. She had written what she felt herself called upon to write, and though she was beginning to feel that she might perhaps do this thing better, she had no doubt that the thing itself was the right thing for her. Which is actually really inspirational for me getting back into writing this month because that's exactly what I'm doing. It's like, yeah, you realize everything you write will never be perfect, but you should still write it and you, you still feel called upon to write it. So number seven, The Three Musketeers is a book of a strong friendship or allegiance. Do you have a favorite fictional friendship? I mean, my first thought goes to like L Lord of the Rings, Sam and Frodo. Um, another one I really enjoyed is just like all the friendships from the Six of Crows duology by Leigh Bardugo. I really enjoyed that. There's so many good friendships in fiction. Um, and I feel like a lot of them are overshadowed by romance. Like everything has to be a romance. You can't just have a simple friendship without like shipping them together. Number eight, The Three Musketeers is a story with strong female characters who are brave, fearless, yet gentle and loving. However, some of them prove to be true evil. Do you have a favorite female fictional character? Who is it and why? Ooh, my favorite. Mm, they'll be hard. I, I go immediately to Elizabeth Bennet in Pride and Prejudice because she's my default, especially when I was younger. She used to be so inspirational to me because she is very much a perfection. She's not exactly a real person. She's not fully fleshed out or developed, but she has a lot of these ideals, um, the, these ideal qualities uh, of a woman, especially during that time. And I, I really loved how, like, she's not... She has decorum, she has finesse, she has kindness and gentleness, but she also has this strength and quit, quit. And she was my ideal when I was younger. And I, I really admired her because she had that perfect balance in she wasn't like, she knew how to conduct herself in social situations. She wasn't like her younger sisters, Lydia and Kitty, but then she was also uh, willing to stand out and not just be, um, and airhead or not just be very simple in her life like she wanted more she loved reading and literature so yeah she was probably one of my favorite female characters number nine there are more than 50 film adaptations of the three musketeers i did not know that but that is a lot <laughs> Is there a film adaptation that you enjoyed more than the actual book? And there are some adaptations that I like just as much as the book version, like the 1995 Pride and Prejudice, as we were just talking about Pride and Prejudice. I like those equally, but where it came to like a better adaptation, you know, one that comes to mind that I don't think necessarily it's a lot better, but they made a TV version of The Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. And I saw the movie before I saw read the book. And even though I love the book, it's a lot harder to read the book because you don't quite get quite as many visuals as you do in the movie. So even though I think they're equally as good, I think personally I prefer the TV series. It was a mini series uh, better than the book. Becky says she owns three different editions of The Three Musketeers. Is there any book you own more than one edition of? I'm pretty sure no, I don't anymore. And if I do, I tend to get rid of them. Uh, so I recently just unhauled a copy of War and Peace because I already have a copy of that. So I don't think I own any other books that I own in like multiple copies. Uh, usually if I like get a new copy of a book, I decide between the two what I like better and I keep that one. Number 11, have you read The Three Musketeers or any other book by Alexandre Dumas? If yes, which one? Now, there are quite a few books that Alexandre Dumas read, 
uh, wrote. However, I have only read The Three Musketeers, haven't read The Count of Monte Cristo, and I did look up on Goodreads because I was curious like what other books he wrote, and I don't recognize any of the other books he wrote. So, And finally, tag some friends to do this tag. I'm not going to tag anybody, but if you do either one of these tags, I'd love to hear your answers. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I post every Saturday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great week. Bye.